Hello all and welcome. My name is Dougal Shakespeare and today I'm going to present our research which is on the topic of exploring artist gender bias in music recommendation. This work is a collaborative project alongside Lorenzo Picaro, Emilio Gomez and Carlos Castillo conducted with the Music Technology Group, Universitat Pompeo Fabra, Barcelona, Spain. First of all, I'd like to thank all of you for coming to the workshop today and taking the time to listen to this talk. I really appreciate it and hopefully you find some of the topics and ideas spoken about insightful and interesting. So moving swiftly on to the motivations of this work. As you may have understood from the title, our work focuses on exploring the means in which commonly deployed collaborative filtering algorithms in music recommender systems may propagate a gender bias. A preliminary question which may come to mind is why consider gender in this context? To answer this question, we refer to a recent study from Ainsberg Inclusion Initiative highlighted here. In their study, they find that females are still underrepresented in many roles in the Western music industry, be it artists, songwriting, or producing roles. This has raised concern in Western media and academia alike about the presence of a gender bias still residing in the music industry. Of course, disproportionate treatment of this instance is very multifaceted. Uh, so in our work, we highlight one such instance which may be the root cause of a disproportionate gender treatment that is pre-existing bias of an individual or user. Evidence in the works of Miller shown here to be existent. Our research asks the question, to what extent do commonly deployed collaborative filtering algorithms propagate such a bias if found? And to what extent do these biases exist in two last FM listening events data sets, which we consider in this work? So moving on to our research methodology. To assess this propagation of a bias and the presence of it, we deploy the recently proposed metric of bias disparity, defined at a high level to be the case where the recommender system introduces bias in the data uh, by amplifying existing biases and reinforcing stereotypes. So the metric consists of two parts, preference ratio and bias disparity. Preference ratio is defined to be the conditional probability that a user of category G listens to an item of category C, whereas bias disparity is the computation of a preference ratio in a user's recommendation list and it's a relative comparison to that of one's listening histories. So effectively, if with respect to an individual's listening history, uh, an item category is overrepresented, we have a positive bias disparity score. If it is underrepresented, we have a negative bias disparity score. So in our work, we test two kinds of algorithms. Firstly, baseline approaches, a most popular and using item average algorithm, and two collaborative filtering algorithms, a K and M based approach and non-negative matrix factorization. We tune the hyperparameters of both KNN and NMF approaches tested to achieve the best performance possible with respect to the rank aware metric NDCG at N. In our work, we consider two last FM datasets, LFM1B and LFM360K. For both datasets, we observe that males are in the majority for users and artists, and we also observe that in the long tail, females are more proportionally likely to reside in comparison to the top head. This leads to the conclusion that perhaps females may be more subject to a negative bias disparity as a result of the well-studied phenomenon popularity bias, whereby artists in the long tail do not receive proportional representation in recommendations. Our work also sets up two experimental scenarios to test the propagation of a bias. That is, firstly, a real-world scenario whereby we sample users and artists, thereby maintaining distributions representative in both data sets. We use this scenario to, text for, to test for an extreme situation where users have high preference for male artists. We also simulate an upside down world whereby we test uh, if bias propagation is solely reserved for male artists or if in fact can transpire towards females. We only sample users who have an extreme preference for female artists and perform a stratified sample. So preliminary results. Our graphs shown here plot the preference ratio for experiment one. What can we first observe? Input preference shown in the dotted lines here is relatively high across both data sets for male artists, thereby in line with the findings of Miller et al in their work on music preference of Australian young adults. We also observe that users of the same gender as an artist have a marginally higher input preference than artists than users who have a different gender to an artist, which again is also in line with the findings of Miller et al. With regards to the bias disparity plot shown here, we observe that bias is positive for male artists in the sense that they are therefore overrepresented marginally in both data sets. We observe minimal difference across the user KNN and NMF based approaches tested. And we observe the effect of bias propagation to be marginally greater in the LFM1B data sets 
reflected in the lower proportion of long tail recommendation. For experiment two, we now plot the bias disparity. From these results, we observe that bias disparity is positive for female artists across both datasets, showing that bias can in fact be induced in the reverse manner to experiment one, i.e. towards female artists. We also observe that the NMF algorithm results in the lowest levels of bias disparity, reflected in the high levels of coverage and spread, which are attained. We also observe that again, the effect of bias propagation is slightly more amplified in the LFM1B dataset in comparison to LFM360K, which is the same for experiment one. So what conclusions can we draw from this preliminary work? Firstly, our work evidence is pre-existing gender bias, uh, connecting to literature on music psychology and gender studies, we find evidence of a prong pre-existing bias towards male artists on both the last fair data sets studied. We also show that this pre-existing bias can drive collaborative filtering algorithms to overrepresent male artists, thereby inducing a bias disparity. Our work also finds that bias disparity is not solely reserved for male artists, but in fact can transpire in the inverse scenario. And finally, our work highlights differences across memory and model-based approaches. The NMF algorithm tested produces more recommendations which are representative of users' input gender preference and therefore in this context can be seen as the most representative algorithm. Of course, there are limitations to this work. Firstly, our work considers a binary classification of gender, which is an oversimplification of the state-of-the-art non-binary perspective of gender widely considered in the gender studies literature. So we suggest for future works to further uh, push towards developing more music information retrieval data sets with non-binary gender as a standard, which could be an interesting direction which would elicit a lot of research to be done in this field. Our, our work is also a short-term assessment of a gender bias propagation and does not go into the long-term impact. We suggest that this would be an interesting direction for future work to consider, uh, perhaps including longitudinal data or simulation frameworks could be applied as one future direction to study the impact of a gender bias propagation. Okay, so that's everything today. I'd like to thank you all for listening to this talk and I'd now be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you.